Hi everyone, my name is Chad Borman. I'm with Global Environmental Products based in San Bernardino, California. And I'm here today to give you an introduction of Global's uh, newest green technology, our uh, Global M4 EV all electric street sweeper. Uh, circling back, just a brief history on Global. Uh, Global has uh, specializes in building the purpose-built style machine that you see here. So what I mean by purpose-built is that we build this entire sweeper from the ground up at our facility in San Bernardino, California. We're not building a uh, sweeper body and then trying to outfit it to the back of a commercial truck. Everything that we build uh, in this footprint, whether it be a mechanical sweeper or a regenerative air sweeper, uh, is built to this package or this design. Now, Global does build three-wheel and four-wheel mechanical and regenerative air sweepers. Um, in terms of alternative fuel, uh, we're ahead of almost anybody else in the game at this point. Uh, we have the only Class 7 all-electric sweeper that we're aware of on the market. By Class 7, we mean 26,000 gross vehicle weight rating or above and that's the machine that you're looking at here today. We've got a three-wheel version of this, which is much more maneuverable, a little turn in 12 and a half feet, that's actually been built and shipped to Tokyo, Japan, that they're operating on a daily basis over there. Global builds hydrogen fuel cell, Global builds compressed natural gas, um, Global also builds diesel electric hybrid that's actually been in, uh, in production and in operation in New York City for over 10 years. So uh, the package that we have here again today, this is a mechanical type sweeper. So you're going to see uh, we do have the side brooms that are windrowing the material into the front of a center broom or a main broom, and that main broom is flipping the material on to an elevator system. Um, with this package, a couple of the benefits that, that Global can do that our competition can't, first off, is actually locating the main broom where we do on the machine. We can actually take the center broom and tuck it right underneath of the machine, tight to the side brooms and tight to the elevator. Competition out there is mounting on a commercial truck, and anytime you mount on a commercial truck, they have a drive shaft that's running through the center of the frame. And uh, because of that, they have their center broom hanging after frame on the machine. So anybody that goes out and does sweeping, any operator that does any left or right hand turn sweeping realizes that uh, these machines are inherent to leaving a trail, especially when you make that right turn. Global minimizes that by having the ability to tuck the center broom where we do on this design. Now that's not only for the electric sweeper, that's for diesel units also where the diesel engine is mounted in here. Our drive motor on both machines is at the rear of the machine and I'll point that out to you later. That's what gives us the ability to tuck that broom where it is. Now with this design, we build all of our machine as high dumps, okay? The package that we have here, this is a 5.6 cubic yard hopper. You can see that it's raised to the dump position now. Uh, the highest dump point on this machine is 114 inches, which gives us the ability to dump into any tandem axle truck. Um, with, this, uh, with this design, the whole idea is efficiency by keeping it on the road sweeping and allowing the truck to empty into the truck and continue to sweep. Again, that's inherent between both the mechanical sweeper and the regenerative air. I also like to point out the short wheelbase on the machine. This machine is 131 inch wheelbase. For a four wheel sweeper, it's the only one that can actually turn in an 18 and a half foot turning radius. This machine will also get up and run down the interstate at 55 to 65 miles per hour. So it, uh, it meets on, on uh, all highway regulations, anything that are required. It's got the ABS brake system on it, anything required to put it on the highway. And last but not least is what I'd really like to point out on the cab. Uh, is the superior visibility that we provide with our design. Uh, anything in a commercial truck requires dual steering for left hand or right hand side sweeping. Uh, Global does not require that. We build our own cabs in house. They're a pressurized cab. The operator sits right in the center of the, of the, the driving position or right in the center of the cab. So left hand and right hand visibility is, is phenomenal all the way around. Uh, the machine is built as a cab over design so we see straight down in front of us. We want to make sure that we, we see where we're driving. Um, it's just superior visibility and for this reason uh, this machine is used in a lot of the large metro areas like, uh, like New York City, Chicago and different cities like that. Now I'd like to get into uh, what makes this machine really special. Again, this is the global M4 EV, meaning all electric vehicle, uh, zero emission machine. You're gonna notice that there is no diesel engine, there's no engine whatsoever on this machine. Is what we're actually looking at is a 180 kilowatt 
battery pack system on here, okay? Um, the system is actually set up with an onboard charger. So if I look at the component up to the top, the box up to the top that says 138.8 volts, that's a 20 kilowatt on charger. As far as the charge system goes, uh, we are actually charging the machine using a, a standard level 2 J1772 charge pack. Um, the ultimately is what you need in your facility is going to be 240 volts at 50 amps as long as we can plug into that is what that allows us to do is actually about a one to one charged operation time so we can actually go run a full shift you take it back overnight if the uh, battery is completely depleted and you're going to charge for nine to eleven hours overnight on that level two system and uh, the next day you should be able to go operate the machine for nine to eleven hours on a full battery charge okay obviously that's variable uh, based upon the number of uh, hills that you're climbing, the amount of drive time versus sweep time, you consume more power into the battery as you're actually driving than you do sweeping. So those are variables that we must take into account when it comes to battery life. Uh, tests that we're running in New York City right now is actually showing that on a full day of sweeping uh, in New York City, they're coming back and they still have roughly 50% uh, battery life, 40 to 50% battery life at the end of the day. Okay, so we've talked about the charge pack that's up at the top. Um, again, right here on the fender is actually where we're going to plug in and we're going to charge with our 1772. That's where your plug is going to end up going. Mounted right down below is actually our hydraulic module is what they call it. Um, the hydraulic system that's actually on the machine, uh, is act it's, it's only driving the sweep functions. So the machine itself is operating electrically with the motor off the back. However, the sweep functions, the side brooms, the center broom, the elevator, and the hopper dump, these are hydraulic cylinders, they're actually operating off of uh, uh, hydraulic gear pumps. Now those hydraulic gear pumps are actually driven off of an electronic motor that we have mount, uh, mounted right there, and that's a 60 kilowatt motor that's actually running that system. Okay. The last box that we see up here at the top on the right hand side, that's actually just a DC. Now, Global does have the ability to actually do export power um, like, a, uh, like, an, like an external generator off the front of the machine, in which case we would add a DC to AC converter. And when you add that AC converter, it actually gives you the ability to, to plug in and use the, the entire sweeper as a mobile generator. Um, something that we've done on the diesel electric hybrid for a number of years. It's, it's a very, very nice feature of the equipment. Okay. Um, the last thing that we actually have mounted under here that I really want to show is going to be our water pump system okay so we do have two uh, electric diaphragm water pumps the machine does require that we put water down to control the dust that uh, is otherwise stirred up by the by the sweeping components the brooms the elevator etc the machine is equipped with 250 gallon water tank that's mounted below the battery pack system. Water pumps are located here with an actual manual breaker in case you were to run them dry. They're, uh, they're fail safe pumps, you're not going to destroy the pump. But if you needed to, it pops breaker, you need to reset that breaker. Our button is located right in here. Now, in the state of California, um, in Nevada, Arizona, places like that where we're required to meet PM10 requirements, uh, all of the global products that we offer, whether it be mechanical, regen, alternative fuel, electric, all of those products are actually offered with PM10. Anytime you see the machine that has the blue hoses located where they're spraying, uh, you know, like misting curtains around the broom gear, you're gonna notice a blue hose there, you're gonna notice a blue hose there that's actually containing material here. That does meet all PM10 requirements. This is very important for us uh, in locations where people are using maybe like CMAC funding, which is congestion mitigation and air quality funding. Uh, a couple of things that they're required to do are meet PM10 requirements and also beat by American, which is a big, big thing for global. Again, we're building in San Bernardino, California. This entire machine is built from the ground up there. Um, even the battery system on this machine is made in Michigan, okay? Back to the batteries, again, we had talked they're 180 kilowatt. We do have an option to upgrade to 240 kilowatt to increase battery life. Um, the war warranty on those batteries is eight years. And then lastly, when it goes to charging, I told you this is a level two charge system. We do have the option to go to a level three charge system, which would increase the uh, charge speed to full capacity and, and practically cut it in half from uh, nine hours overnight to about five hours overnight. As we stand at the rear of the machine, a few things that I actually want to point out. 
as I mentioned earlier, we are running the rear axle on this, of this machine using an electric So right behind this cover, if we remove that cover, is actually a 120 kilowatt uh, motor, electric motor that's driving the rear axle. On our standard machines, if it's a diesel, we still have the drive motor in the back. It's just a hydrostatic drive system, so that'd be a uh, hydraulic motor that's actually operating the rear axle. But in this case, this is all electric, 120 kilowatt. Global does provide the option to increase from 120 kilowatt to 140 kilowatt or even all the way up to 200 kilowatt if we need that extra power. Uh, we've recently had an opportunity to run a test on a 28% uh, grade uh, up in the Pacific Northwest. And on that 28% grade, you can imagine how steep that is, uh, we were able to sweep up that hill uh, really with no difficulty. It was a very, very good test. We were excited to do it. Again, we did that with the 120 kilowatt motor, knowing that we have the ability to increase that and actually improve the performance even more. Okay, another thing Global's doing, uh, you notice with the hopper up in the front, the, all the access to the battery and the, uh, the hydraulic gear pumps, the electronic motors, all the access with the hopper raised, a lot of space to get to that, to get to the elevator components. From the back, we do the same thing. If I flip our panel open, now on this machine, we don't have as much going on. This is just the battery pack system on a standard diesel unit. Your air filters, which are located up here. You've got your, your oil filters located in different places, but everything opens up so that we can get to it. Is what we really like to focus on at Global is what we call strike zone maintenance, which would be letters to knees without climbing underneath or climbing on top. Now this system, actually, if, if you know, God forbid we had any kind of a failure with the battery pack system, we can actually change this entire battery out in about 30 minutes. We would actually just disconnect up front and then come to the back, get a fork truck to, to load up from behind, lift it up, and pull the whole thing out. It's actually, it's pretty neat to see. Um, but very easy and accessible to get to. And the last thing that I would like to show uh, from the rear of the machine with this hopper raised, it kind of gives you a good view of it. Um, in the hopper, we want to increase the amount of load capacity we can. I had mentioned that this hopper will actually hold 5.6 cubic yards of material. Our volumetric is 5.6 cubic yards of material. We want to use as much of that as possible. So if you look to the front of the hopper where the material would load in from the elevator, Global and all mechanical sweepers, uh, we, we build the machine with a hopper load wheel. And that hopper load wheel is designed so that anytime the elevator is rotating and feeding that wheel, that wheel will also rotate and load to the rear of the hopper. As we fill from the rear of the hopper forward, uh, there's a sensor on the motor on that that will detect the rotational speed. And as soon as it uh, starts to uh, detect any kind of interference or restriction or slows that RPM, a buzzer goes off in the cab to let the operator know that your hopper is full. At this side of the machine, I want to uh, begin by showing you the hydraulic gear pumps that we're using that actually uh, operate the, the sweep function, such as the main broom, our elevator, and our side brooms. Uh, these are gear pumps that we use on, on all of our standard machines as well. They're identical components. Um, you'll actually see where these are attached to our 60 kilowatt electric motor that are driving the, the hydraulic functions of the sweeper. Again, the entire machine is driven electrically. However, we do still operate the sweep functions hydraulically. Uh, with that in mind, we come back to what we call our hydraulic manifold locker. Now, the idea behind the hydraulic manifold locker is to take all of those components, hydraulic manifolds, the solenoids and things, and move them away from the nasty sweeping environment, get them away from the water, get them away from the dirt as much as we possibly can. So Global does that on all machines by actually taking uh, all those hydraulic manifold blocks and mounting them in the left rear fender. Um, we have schematic diagrams that are actually located inside that label and tell us what every one of these solenoids and these manifold blocks are doing. For instance, I could look at uh, this solenoid, I see that it's marked solenoid 4A diagram and know that solenoid 4A is controlling my gutter broom lift. Now so what that means to us is if we have any kind of an issue with that broom spinning or not lifting and we come back and we track it down to that solenoid, the first question that we ask is, is that electric or hydraulic? Is that where the issue is? Um, something that Global builds on all the machines is right to the back of the rear fender here, we put an onboard diagnostics LED board. Okay, is what that board is doing for us is if the function isn't working, we can actually have somebody stand back and watch the LED board. 
Another individual would be in the cab, it would hit the button to the function that isn't working, and when he hits that button, if electronically everything is working and making it back to the rear fender, we should see that LED light up. If that LED lights up, we know it's not electric to this point, so let's take a look in the hydraulic manifold locker. If the LED does not light up, we can be pretty sure that it's electric and it's ahead of this rear fender. Now if that's the case, we would come up here and this is actually our electric systems locker. And we're very proud of this setup. Again, if you're going to notice, all these major electrical components are mounted in this box right below the cab, up the head of the sweep gears. What that means to us is as the, the sweep gear is turning, we're getting water, we're getting dust, that's all staying behind the actual uh, electrical box itself. Now inside the electrical box, a couple of things I'd like to point out is you're going to notice that um, all the wiring is color coded, all the wiring is, is hot stamped every 12 inches uh, with a number and function. Um, we don't do any splicing in between components in the electrical system on the machine. Um, everything on here, all the component, or all the wiring connectors are crimped and soldered and protected from water. It's a very, very, very clean system. Another key feature that we build into the electrical system is you're going to notice the copper bus strips, the ground strips. Okay, Global doesn't ground anything to the frame. So you're going to notice the copper bus strip here, one back here, and one in the rear fender. Okay? We do everything we can to make sure that over time as you're using these machines and the dirt starts to build up in the frame or around the rest of the machine, you just can't get it clean, that that doesn't cause any kind of grounding issues or issues that you just simply can't find. It's a very, very clean system. I'd like to thank you for talking about the Global M4 EV mechanical sweeper. Um, last thing I want to do is get in do a little sweeping, uh, pay attention to how quiet the machine operates. Majority of what you're going to hear is the actual brooms down sweeping and the material loading into the hopper. Very, very quiet machine. Thanks again, and we look forward to bringing the machine out to you where you can drive it and uh, have a look firsthand at what we presented today. Thank you very much.